Welcome back to the Are You Being Real podcast. We have one of my dear friends in the house today, her second time on the podcast. That is the one and only Alicia Dunhams. Alicia, welcome back to the show. Great to be here, Mark. So good to see you yeah. again. It's been a few months. Yeah, it's been a few months since we've seen each other. And the first time we got mic'd up was in episode six of this show. It was three years ago. I had no idea what I was doing, but we had a great conversation. And uh, just awesome to have you back. You've got a new book, which I'm excited to share with everybody. It's called I Get To. And it's really an incredible book because... The words that we use, whether speaking with ourselves or speaking with others, has such a big impact on the lives that we that we ultimately lead. And there's such like you have such amazing tips here in this book that make it really easy for people to change their relationships, both with themselves and others. And they're really simple tools that anyone can apply. And uh, I had the great pleasure of uh, reading your book. And uh, there's there's so much gold in it. And uh, you're also the founder of Bestseller in a Weekend. You've helped 2,000 people, maybe even more by now, launch their writing careers, become authors. So, Alicia, you're absolutely amazing. It's awesome to have you back on the show. Thank you so much, Mark. Great to be here. Yeah, my pleasure. So I want to dive right into it. One of my favorite things to do on the show is just to get right into a deep, vulnerable, real share. So I wanted to see if you'd be willing to take us back to a moment in your life where your authenticity was really challenged, where you found it to be really difficult to be real. And uh, I'd love to have you paint us that picture to take us there and then let us know what happened. Absolutely. Uh, wow. I'm thinking about so many times in my life where I became vulnerable, where I had walls up and I knew the only way out was through was bringing down those walls. So when you ask that question, the first thing that comes to mind was a, a relationship that I had uh, in which I was not being honest, in which I was living a double life and I could not live like that anymore. And in that moment, I needed to tell the other person the truth. I needed to tell the other person the truth. And really with that, the relationship came crumbling down. My ego came crumbling down. Everything came crumbling down, but it requires those, those depths in life, those, or those really low points in life are required for you to overcome and, and have heights. And, and in this particular situation, I was in a relationship because it was nice. It was easy. It was what I was supposed to be doing but it wasn't what I wanted to be doing and, and, or I was not fully in that relationship. So I wasn't all in. Gotcha. Was How more... long did the relationship last? Or well, it was a five year time? relationship okay. and we were engaged. Okay. And, and so in that particular situation, when I came clean with that, I was not fully in and that I was living a double life. When I came clean with that, it, w it gave him the opportunity to make a decision what he wanted moving forward. And so I always say when people ask me counsel, I mean, obviously I'm a, I'm a business and a book coach, but when anyone asks me about personal relationships, it's always be honest so they can make the best decision for themselves moving forward. Because what happens is you, because when you're really scared and, and I was talking, uh, we were just talking about Mike Robbins and he was sharing with me, who's, who's an author, uh, the sweaty palm conversations in life. If you want deeper relationships, if you want your relationships in life to be real, the more sweaty palm relationships mm. you have, the better. So when we keep things on the surface, when we keep things all nice and, you know, airplane conversations where, or, you know, how's the weather type of conversations, it's not until we go deep that we really create the relationships and the life that we want. And so for me, it was really scary to come clean because my whole life was integrated. Everything was nice, you know, mortgages, car payments, all of the wow. things that yeah. uh, life we aim to have. And when that, all that comes crumbling down, you really see, uh, you really see what you are made of. And for me, I think the biggest thing, it was so funny because when I left that relationship, I was fine. I'm like, okay, great. But it wasn't until he moved on with someone else that, wow, like ego, like it was like a literally a th three by five piece of lumber <laughs> knocking me in the head where I like went to some major depths because of feelings of, Oh wow, he's moved on feelings of, uh, of wow. I'm, I'm that replaceable, I guess. Well, you know what? You got a little uh, piece of your own medicine. Hmm. And, and so there was a, a lot of 
conversations of I needed to go to those depths for me to have the relationship that I have today where we are radical. We practice radical honesty, where we are honest, where we mm-hmm. share our feelings, where where I will I never want to feel that way again. And and so for me, it's honoring this relationship and never doing anything like I did before. And sometimes people say, oh, people can't change. Absolutely, people can change. Absolutely, people can change. And it it really requires the death of ego. It requires some big stuff for you to say, I don't want that ever to happen again. What kind of work do I get to do to ensure that doesn't happen today? Again, so deep work, deep work. Uh, after that, I did a workshop on intimacy. I really worked with a lot of coaches on why was I scared to go deep with someone, to be in a relationship with someone. And I realized it was because prior to that, I was in a lot of transactional relationships with men. And and so when I was with a man who really loved me, I was like, whoa, okay, this doesn't feel right. Let me sabotage it. Let me pull the the rug up. And, and then I realized, oh, wow, there's some really deep stuff going that have been for years and I get to start from the beginning and, and really heal. It's beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing. And I think it goes without saying, being free is pretty much everything we want in life. And when we don't have the ability to express how we really feel, I mean, we're just essentially building a personal prison around us. So while I'm sure that was an incredibly challenging experience, like I love hearing what's available on the other side, which is, is that freedom, the ability to express so you're not holding on to things or ashamed of things or resenting you know, your partner feeling guilty and instead are able to just be real with them, which not only feels amazing in the moment, I'd imagine, but also creates like the gateway for like profound connection, deeper connection. So true. I kept a lot of things back in that relationship because of shame and 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 wanting to be something else, fit into that white picket fence when that's not the life I wanted. And now the relationship I with now, with the man that I'm with now, my partner, uh, inc- it's so different because I put everything on the table. Like when our first couple of dates, he knew everything about me. I mean, we we are constantly sharing what's on our, you know, what's on our mind, what's coming up for uh, for us, what our truth in the moment is, yeah. and and those are the conversations. So we have a like yeah. incredibly deep relationship, and I feel incredible. Like this is the man. Uh, this I needed to go through that to create the relationship that I ultimately wanted. And that was being free, honest, no judgment. That's the biggest thing is like no one wants to be judged. Mm, right. And when you have things in your past that you're not proud of, you want to be with a partner that like takes it all on. It's like, come on, baby, just bring it on. Okay, that's all right. <laughs> oh, you did that? Oh, really? Okay, <laughs> that's all right. I did this, you know, in the past. And that's an incredible incredible freedom. I mean, my partners told me things that I think most women would not be able to hold. Yeah. And I hold space for it. It's like, oh, wow. What are the lessons that you learned from that? A lot of times things come off of our chest as explosive, explosive anger. Yeah. And, and that doesn't have the same effect of a, like a really courageous conversation. So in terms of courageous conversation, yeah. you're calling someone forth, not out. Yes. I love that in your book. Yeah. And, and in a, in an explosive anger conversation, it becomes, I mean, it's op- you're operating from the amygdala. So you're operating from fight, flight, or freeze that you are being attacked. Their experience themselves as being attacked. And so what comes out of that situation is a very much a us against them conversation versus a we conversation. So when you call someone forth, when you say, this is my truth in the moment, Mm -hmm. when you sit down to have a clearing or a conversation, it, first of all, you get to create an environment of a disarming environment an uh, an environment of no judgment. Uh, I, what I want is for us to grow from this uh, mutually and, and it's that kind of languaging that I, talk about in my book. Exactly. I think it's a great way to segue to I get to versus have to something that most people say, like, you know, I got to pick up my I have to pick up my kids for school. I have to do laundry. I have to go to work. I have to do this. I have to do that. And like just the tone, right? Just saying that is like, oh, it sounds like a chore versus 
hey, we're alive, we're breathing, this is all a get to, this is all a gift. So this is really an amazing book. And uh, I'm glad that you took that segue because in order to have some of those difficult conversations where we are speaking our truth, being super authentic vulnerably and have no idea how the other person will respond, like those are the moments that really counts to be authentic. It's like when there's something at stake, if there's a relationship at stake or if your career is at stake, those those are the moments when it's more important than ever and it's also more challenging. So yeah, any other great tips that you have in terms of how to tee up those conversations in a way that you know allow us to speak our truth, but in a way that it's gonna be conveyed in the most effective way possible. So we feel like we're speaking our truth in a way that represents our truth as well as in a way that it's actually received and heard and understood from the other person and hopefully it will help us achieve the outcome that we want as the person is delivering the message. Absolutely. So it's not just the words we use yeah. because I, I firmly believe that what we say we create. So yeah. the words we use, but it's the intonation of those words. It's also our body language. It's also the lack of words. So the pause, I call it the pregnant pause. Being able to <laughs> comfortly in at three seconds, just pause and look at someone, let the space settle. And that's very important. So I have a whole tip on the pause and speaking to someone. So some, someone asked you a question because questions actually can ignite the amygdala. And so that's where tonation comes in. So what do you mean by that? Versus, I'm curious, what do you mean by that? So it, it like really, it, it affects a different part of our brain when we think, what do you mean by that? It's like, we're, we're all of a sudden on guard. You know, our boss is saying, oh, what do we mean by that? We're gonna lose our job versus a curiosity versus a softness in our tone. And so it's really those three words, tonation, intonation, and also our body language. But in terms of tips, first of all, the first chapter, first tip is I get to versus I have to. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I wrote this book so quickly, I, I share that I, I wrote the initial manuscript in my weekend workshop, and then I did like a 10 day just power, just stayed in bed <laughs> and empowered through to edit it, uh, is because I interviewed Chris Lee. We both know Chris Lee. Mm -hmm. He's a author. He's a transformational leader. And I interviewed him for my, my webisode, my YouTube channel. And I uploaded this onto LinkedIn and didn't really think about it. We did talk about, I get to versus I have to. And a woman commented on my LinkedIn and she said, thank you so much for sharing this. She shares that the power, there was so much power turning her have tos into get tos when she buried her daughter. Mm. That yeah, super real situation. Super real. She's like, where can I find the get to in this situation? And that moved me so much. And she said, she said that the gratitude in the moment completely dissipated the sorrow, dissolved the sorrow. And that perspective shifts are available by in, at any time by anyone. And that is the power of reframe. And this is what all these words are. It's like reframing the situation. So I have tips from this. One of the simplest reframes is changing. I have to, to, I get to, I, I have to go to work today versus I get to go to work because guess what? There's some people who don't have a job. Yeah. So whether it's talking to someone, whether you're at work, at home, I, I have a script in here uh, that I use with my daughter a lot, which is, uh, is, uh, um, oh, it is, uh, can you support me? Mm -hmm. Can you support me? I, oh, I need your support. That's the exact script. I need your support. So when we're going back and forth, whether it's doing the dishes, cleaning up the house, what have you, and she's not listening, it's like, Izzy, I really need your support. And so just the disarming of that particular situation, see, she sees me as, it's, it's a sub-dominant switch. Mm. So when you have two dominant forces, someone gets to acquiesce. Someone gets to soften. And, and usually some people might think, well, I don't want to soften because that's weak. Well, really, if you're getting what you want in the conversation, in the relationship, it's not. Sure. So soften, I soften. I really need your support. 
And she like, she's like, oh, certainly I'll help you, mom. But when I was yesterday in this like, woo, we were in the car doing our thing. We were both in our dom, dominant, and no one wins. No one wins until we eventually laughed it off and started over. Uh, that's another tip. There's 40 tips in this book. And another tip is cancel, cancel, or can I do, have a redo? Oh, cool. Tell me more how that works. Because I've heard that one before when I was reading through the book. I'm like, I definitely want to ask Alicia about cancel, cancel. Absolutely. Now, I heard this from someone we both know, uh, Margot Majdi, who's the- uh, Amazing. Lead. I've had her on the podcast. Uh, yes. Uh, who's amazing, a transformational leader as well, has a transformational center. She said, I first heard cancel, cancel from her. So that's when you say something out loud and you're like, I can't believe I just said that. And I just put those words out into the universe because when you see how powerful your words are, so cancel, cancel. Let me, it's a way to like erase, get a big pink eraser and erase what you just said. Or if you're in a conversation in the corporate world, for example, and it's going in the wrong direction or it's going sideways, it's like, can we do a redo? Mm -hmm. Can we start over? So it's similar to cancel, cancel. Now, the reason we do that is because when a conversation is going in the wrong direction or in a, a, a direction that does not work, you want to be able to start over with a clean slate. And we all have that choice. Mm -hmm. And it's a choice point. And I, and I talk about that in the book. And that's another one of the tips is I choose to versus I'm trying, which I'm trying is failing with honor. I choose to or I'm committed to, which is another uh, which is another tip in the book. I'm committed to Friday by 6 p.m. having the report to you. So that comes from a place of commitment, mm -hmm. intentionality, where I'm trying integrity and I'm trying comes from loosey goosey. I'm trying. And so from you're either going to do it or you're not. You're either going to do it or not. So it's like I, I'm committed to, I choose to. Uh, and and also I am, I share in the book, is really not only the words you use, but the words you use being a platform in terms of the mindset that you create. Yeah, there's another one that you have in the book that's one of my personal favorites that took a little time for me to implement. It's yes and. So if someone were to say something to me that I totally disagree with, if I instantly tell them no, 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 I'm giving them the invitation to put themselves on the defensive. So Absolutely. we're essentially creating a war with one another. We're driving ourselves further apart. Yet if I really want them to understand what I have to say, a great way of not shooting whatever they said down, you can say yes and, and then you proceed to tell them however you felt. And it's just a great way of keeping the conversation going, honoring what the person said. And I found that to be a very valuable tip. I love yes and, and it's an improv tip. Yep. My daughter really supported me and teaching me more about that because my okay. daughter's great at improv. And when you say, but you basically cancel everything beforehand. I love your house, but you should change this rug and put it over here. Like, like you do not love my house. So, you don't. So, so that means, because like if your mom said that, it's like, well, you just canceled out that you love my house. So, so for example, in in an idea ideation or a, a brainstorming session, it's like yes and because the no, the interesting, I have an interesting relationship with the word no. I know it's big in circles. You say no so you can focus on what you say yes to. Yes and. I believe the word yes is a word of possibility because mm -hmm. you get to really stretch when you say yes. For example, Mark, would you be willing to interview one of my Best Seller Weekend clients on your podcast? There's so many different ways that I could do that. You haven't given me much information. <laughs> so the initial word that I'm thinking about is maybe... Maybe. And I know where you're going with this because I know your tip. And you actually, you told me this tip at one point and yes. I've passed this along to so many people in winning weeks and different clients. And it's, yes, if. Yes, if. That's, so that's so, instead so of good. no, because. It's conditional. Absolutely. So you, so at that, so when someone kind of throws you a ball like that and you're thinking, could, is this person who, uh, you know, do they know how to speak? Are they, do you could say yes, 
if their book has been a bestseller on Amazon yeah. for you know 30 days or more. Yeah. Or yes, if they have prior experience in the podcasting realm and, yeah. and have appeared on TV. So it's Yes, a, if they're real as fuck. Yes, if they love getting vulnerable. Yes, yes, if they've got an awesome story. Yes, if they're super inspiring. Absolutely. So what you created there was possibility. If, if I asked the same thing and, and said, would you mind interviewing one of my clients who's written a book? And, and you said, no, no, because no, because I don't know them or, yeah. or what have you. It's like you cut off all creative energy at that point. Yeah. So yes, if becomes this opening, this dialogue, this negotiation tool. So good. I love this book. It's so important. You know, I've learned some of these lessons in like transformational work and to have them all in one book is really, it's, it's a Bible. And this is the type of book that you can kind of pick up at any point in time. You like, you don't have to read it from cover to cover, although there is great value in doing that as well. So I wanted to ask you about, uh, about self-talk. Mm -hmm. So I know it's one thing for us to practice asking for permission before we share something that we feel like the person we're going to share it with, like. We know that we, or at least we believe they're not going to want to hear what we have to say. Okay. That's one thing. There's little things that we can do to make that easier by just simply saying, Hey, can I make an honest observation with you? But what about when it comes to our conversations with ourselves? And like, I know for me personally, I'm someone who, um, has self doubt and, you know, insecurities and I compare myself to other people. So I'm curious as to what you'd have to say to me and to anybody else who has some sort of internal conversation that maybe they've been experienced or telling themselves their whole lives, which makes it really ingrained in their identity. Uh, what advice would you have to say to them to rewrite the conversation that they have with themselves? Or in this case, what conversation, what, what tips would you have for me to reframe that conversation with myself so I can be, you know, be the man that I want to be? Absolutely. Thank you for that question, Mark. And in terms of being the man that you want to be, it's, it's, it's standing in that place already. So part of that would be the tip in terms of I am. So affirmations, really coming from a place of who you are. And so uh, it's like, what's your, what is your contract? I'm an authentic, confident, and powerful leader. Those are those are the words from the workshop back back five years ago. Yes, absolutely. And mine's, I'm a joyful, connected, and compassionate woman. Yes, you are. And so our contract or our affirmations, and I talk about this in the book, are, are basically the, the the stretching points or the ways of being that create make us a whole being, and and uh, I, I would say that's a way to start and absolutely gratitude. So being grateful for what you have, where you are is so important in terms of being grateful for where you are to create more of that. So gratitude is something I mentioned in the book, meditation, gratitude. In terms of comparison, it's so interesting because I have a concept in the book called uh, what if versus why not. Mm -hmm. And, and when I, when I traveled around the world 20 years ago, I, I literally thought my, my parents' hair were on fire and, and then friends and family, I, everyone thought I was going to, I was going to die and, and all of these different things get murdered, blah, 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 blah. And, and so when you come from, from a personal self-talk perspective, this, this, this what if, and so what's important is to find evidence of the contrary. So if you're like comparing yourself to someone, so there's this, you know, online guru who's making seven figures a year and, you know, traveling the world and, and you're thinking, Oh, that's, that's not me. Or there's this gap. And something I mentioned is fall in love with the gap, be inspired by the gap. It's like, awesome. Okay, great. I'm right here and I want to be there. So be inspired by them versus mm. being comparison. So, wow, they're doing this. So what's in my gap? Okay, great. I get to, I get to focus on this. I get to, you know, create this and, and, it's in the gap where innovation lies. It's in the uh, gap where opportunity lies. It's in the gap that we get to create. I mean, every CEO, if you think about it, probably CEOs are waking up every morning comparing themselves to CEOs. So everyone's like, oh, Jeff Be Bezos and Elon Musk. I mean, everyone's, everyone's comparing themselves to some higher level. And just look at those. Wow, it's it takes the Oprahs and the Elon Musks and the Jeff Bezos to, to inspire us that what one has done all can do it is time for the truth challenge so we're going to wrap up the show here with five questions okay. 
that I'm gonna that I've come come up with really on the fly here, and uh, you're gonna have 30 seconds to answer each of them, and it's just your job to answer the questions honestly and authentically. Do you mm-hmm. accept the challenge? I accept the challenge. All right, the true challenge with the one and only Alicia Dunham's. All right, question number one for you, Alicia. What is the greatest, most meaningful compliment that someone could give you personally? That they change that I changed their life. Absolutely. So writing this book changed my life. Your bestseller in a weekend program changed my life. Me writing my book, being inspired by it changed my life. So when someone tells me that, it's uh it feels like I am on purpose. Question number two for you. What is real for you in your life right now? What is real for me is I feel I'm in a place of change. I'm I put up today, uh, it's my 20th anniversary this year of backpacking around the world. And I was a travel writer. And I went on a, a very much a journey. I, I have a 16 year old daughter. I was single mom. So I definitely played it safe since I've been a mom. Now, compared to some moms, I haven't played it so safe because <laughs> Isabel and I have a quite an adventurous life. But I, I've, I definitely paying bills and 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 making sure all those things are covered, I've felt that this has been on my shoulders. And so now that my daughter's getting older, I'm getting really adventurous again. Awesome. Question number three for you. We were talking to earlier that everyone has some sort of gap mm-hmm. in their life. And you said to fall in love with that gap, to be inspired by that gap. So uh, what is one of those significant gaps for you? One thing that's been on my mind is I used to own a lot of real estate and I lost a lot of real estate during the 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 bubble crash mm-hmm. and I have not because like just like relationships when you get burnt you get scared to get back into one so I'm just getting back into real estate and there's a part of me that's like oh I can't believe I lost that place in San Francisco so that's uh, definitely like a regret and that feels like in the gap <laughs> and I'm like okay my okay. And my gap is I get to I get to start getting real estate again and 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 because uh, it's something that I've loved to do. Awesome. Love it. I think you can get back into that. That's going to happen. It's happening. That is is happening. It's happening. All right. Question number four for you. Of all the tips that you have in your book, what is the toughest one for you to practice? Ooh, that's a good question. The toughest one for me to practice something with my daughter, obviously, uh, because she's my emotional intelligence meter because like every way I could be tested in such a beautiful way. So I would say the being able to really sit down with her, listen, create intimacy, uh, say yes, if versus no, because I do say no to her. And question number five, so fitting that I was thinking of asking you this is, what does your daughter Izzy mean to you? Oh, she means the world to me. I, she's my, she's my life. She's my life. And, and I would say this, she's, you know, a lot of parents say that you're my life. She's her own individual person. She definitely gave me lots of meaning and I made lots of decisions based on her being in my life, but she's a beautiful independent soul. And I just love to see her soar and I'm soaring along with her. The true challenge with the one and only Alicia Dunham's Alicia. Thank you so much for your open, honest and loving sharing. What can we do to support you? Wow. Love that. Purchase the book on Amazon and leave a review. That's my ask. My request is, which is one of the tips in the book, that you purchase my book on Amazon and leave a review. Yeah. So both both of those are key and they're both so important. I know leaving a review really helps other people see the book. It helps in terms of the algorithms. So uh, definitely get a copy of this book. It's it's great to have in your bookshelf. It's great to bring out, to share with a friend. You can bring a lot of value to a friend's life by giving them a tip or two. There's so much gold here in the book. And also, I'm just going to, another way that I know people can support you as well as supporting themselves is to check out Bestseller in a Weekend. Um, amazing weekend workshop where you can write a book in a weekend. Yes, you can. So if you've been itching to share your message with the world, then definitely check that out as well. Bestsellerinaweekend.com. Bestsellerinaweekend.com. Amazing URL. And AliciaDunhams.com. Awesome. So definitely check it out. And then what final words of wisdom, encouragement do you have for listeners listening to the show to live a super real, fulfilling, awesome life? Absolutely. So our greatest opportunity for personal growth is in relationship with other people. And so really delving and digging into that. I love the, the man that I, my, my partner in love and life is uh, 
so present with people and it's like we have we're just a perfect counterbalance because I can I, I saw that quote from last time it's like you can't be intimate people intimate with people if you're zooming around well I'm like Alicia zoom around Dunham's I do run around a lot I'm I you got to catch me and and for me to it, it's so interesting when I travel with Dietrich who's my partner we'll sit in a conversation with someone for three or four hours we'll meet someone like we traveled on Eastern Europe a couple years ago and I'm like, wow, I'm really talking to someone for four hours. Like, I don't talk to anyone for four hours. And it was like, I was fidgeting and stuff like that. And, and I'm like, okay, this is a really perfect balance. Because I was telling a girlfriend today, my, the reason my programs are best learned on a weekend, weekend programs. I have a mastermind coming up, which is a 48-hour real-time money-making mastermind. It's all short period things because I really feel I'm super powerful in short periods, like best of the weekend, let's knock it out. Let's knock out. Let's let everyone, let's make a couple thousand dollars in 48 hours and, and let's write your book in, in best learn a weekend. And my real challenge is like these long term, which is relationships, which is interesting that it's an interesting pattern that many of my relationships, cause I've been engaged three times and married and all of that. Like after a while, like, okay, the, the challenge is long-term relationships and, and connection with people. And, and so I find that to be uh, something that that's a gap and that is so much fun to play with. Alicia, you're so amazing. This has been such a treat and you've been such a dear friend and gift in my life. So I thank you. I honor you. The one and only Alicia Dunham's. Thank you, Mark. 